everyone and welcome to Friday Varnish. My name is Sheila. I hope everybody had a great Christmas or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or whatever um, holiday you celebrate in December. I am so behind. I had a wonderful Christmas, but I am so behind on my videos, you guys. I am so sorry about that, but I think Thursday I was supposed to release a video and Thursday night was actually the very first time that I got to sit down for pleasure I felt like so I just said to myself you know what it wouldn't feel right if I did a very forced video so I'm just gonna chill tonight and here I am on a Saturday morning my husband so very graciously offered to uh, take care of the kids so I can record a video and here I am so um, I think today I'm just gonna be a little bit chit chatty and talk about all the nail polish things that I got for Christmas so mainly this is just from my dear husband who I have to really kind of commend for supporting or maybe enabling would be the right word um my nail polish um obsession addiction enthusiasm whatever you call it but yeah so i got some polishes that i want to share with you and i'm just gonna do this randomly i'm not gonna um like swatch them all but there are things that are similar that i wanted to kind of just see if they were if they were really similar enough so I'm gonna swatch them um I also have some not polish stuff like I mean they're polish related but they're not polishes per se and so we're gonna go ahead and get started so first we're gonna do the other stuff um, this is a hand cream that I wanted I saw this on anthropology.com and it's grown alchemist and it's an age repair hand cream phytopeptide sweet almond and sage and so apparently this is supposed to smooth fine lines and wrinkles correct signs of sun damage while visibly redefining or no redensifying thinning skin um as you all know i have a little bit of a insecurity if I may say so about like the wrinkles in my hands not because I'm old although I am old but um, I really just did not care take care of my hands for the longest time and now I'm like regretting it so much and so I saw this and I'm like hmm maybe I should try like a age defying something or a wrinkle you know healing hand cream and so I put this on my wish list and my husband so very kindly and generously got this for me. Um, the second one that I found in my stocking is this one. This is the Bliss Kiss Simpi Simply Pure Oil and I love this stuff. I always pick the fragrance free ones and um, I usually buy the four packs of this because I want to collect as many of these little like brushes brush thingies um, and then when I have enough so that they are literally everywhere in my house and in my purse in my office then I'll probably start buying the big um, like canister container whatever so I could just refill this but I have not been oiling my hands with these because I ran out and my cuticles are just in rough shape like I have a boo-boo right there now it's really bad it's a bleeder too and so uh yeah so i'm happy to have this and then the next one is this set of i don't know caps i think they call it carolina was the one who suggested this carolina from gotta love polish uh she said she uses these to remove her glitters and you know me if you've been on my channel i hate removing hard to remove polishes so I also put this on my wish list and my thoughtful husband got it for me. So that's nice. And last but not the least on the other things is this Butte Galleria. I think that's how it's called. Um, this is a nail art set. Now I know I haven't been doing nail art for a while, but I do want to get back to it, especially in 2020. And so you can see it's like a full set of like dotting tools. So there's like a dotter right there. 
Um, I don't really know half of how to use these things, but I know I'm going to learn. So that's like, I guess, a thicker dotting tool right there. Um, and then there are brushes, which I'm going to put this back. Oh, well, I'm not going to do that. Um, so there's brushes, different types of brushes, I guess. I don't know if they have measurements. I don't think they have measurements. Nope, they don't have marks, but... So you can see that could be something for reverse stamping. And so yeah, I'm excited to try these. And that's it for all the stuff. So onto the polish. My husband got me four Quixotic polishes. I very much told him the full details of um, the Black Friday sale and stuff like that. I guess he really didn't follow instructions and that sounds like he just randomly picked things that he thought was pretty and picked four because I don't think I think there was like a minimum purchase and you're supposed to get like if you were the first to order or something you're supposed to get a bonus I don't even remember anymore but the bottom line is that these were his picks not my picks this were his picks and I think he did really well so he knows I love yellow so he got mustard seed and I wanted to well let me just tell you everything first and then I'll go ahead and do the comparisons. This is a look at old Baltimore, which he knows I love um, this type of polish. He doesn't know that this is a white crelly with flakes and there is a beautiful shimmer in there. Um, this is Le Petit Prince and it's beautiful. Um, this is from the, oh my goodness, Little Prince collection and it's just such a gorgeous sort of multi-chrome, holographic maybe polish shimmer metallic I don't know I can't talk today um and then this is vintage rose which is something I don't normally wear but it's absolutely gorgeous so in terms of comparison um I'm gonna show you how quixotic compares with Sally Hansen's butter butter not wait butterscotch oh my god i'm telling you so they are very similar i would probably say quixotic is a, just a tad bit darker in tone um than butterscotch but if you've been looking for butterscotch and i know that you know this is discontinued and it's hard to find um, mustard seed is a very close second they sold out on this one but i hope you did get something like this. And then um, if not, there's always D stashes. I have a feeling they're gonna be easier to find on a D stash, but, so I'm gonna try to do a swatch just so you can see the difference. And I have a feeling this is gonna run a little bit longer than I thought it was gonna be, but because of all the swatches, but I mean, as you can see, that is a gorgeous, gorgeous yellow. Right there, formula is phenomenal. So it has, it's definitely mustard and it has like a very sort of butterscotch, like kind of like a, like a squash, butternut squash color to it. So that's the Quixotic. And now I'm gonna do Sally Hansen. And this, let's see how it compares. So hopefully it's, so that is butterscotch right there. The formula, as you can see, is a little bit less desirable. It's a little bit streakier. So, you know, we've really perfected our yellows. So that's the comparison right there. Um, as you can see, the Quixotic is definitely a much more refined formula than uh, Sally Hansen's, but they're close enough that you don't really need them. Um, if I may say so, Quixotic's is a little bit prettier just because Sally Hansen's a little bit muddier, if, if you know what I mean. So yeah, those are the two comparisons. And so the rest of the polishes that I got are all from Polish. Now, this right here in particular is the Fire and Ice collection from way back in the summer. I was on a low buy 
or a no buy even, I thought. And I saw this collection and I fell completely in love with it. But I knew that I'm very serious, sort of, about my no buys and my low buys. And I did not want to get it. So what I did was, ooh, that's actually the wrong polish, right? That's the correct polish right there. So um, what I did was that I said to my husband, if you could please, please give me this Game of Thrones collection and you can keep it for me for Christmas. And he did. And I kind of knew when it arrived and I knew where it was hidden. I did not take a peek. I was so good, you guys. And so now I'm finally, he, it's finally here. I finally have it. And my husband actually was like teasing me and saying, oh, you know, I'm going to hold on to that Game of Thrones collection and give it to you for Mother's Day. And I was about to cry. I'm like, no, I need that like for Christmas. But anyway, so this is the collection. Um, I'm sure you've seen this before, so I'm not going to even like, you know, dwell on it apart from the comparisons. But this one is Dreams and Dust. And this is probably, I think, my favorite among the bunch. It's just so beautiful. This one is Little Bird. And that gorgeous purple with that gold shimmer in there. Or purple pink. Uh, this is Stormborn, which holy macaroni. I could probably, I'm probably going to wear this around the New Year's. Not particularly my New Year polish, but I'm going to do that. This is Winds of Winter, which is my least favorite, I thought, on the bunch. Um, but it's still gorgeous as it is. I'm just not the biggest fan of these blue, bright blues with like kind of like a very monochromatic shimmer inside it. This is Dracaris, which holy macaroni. Gorgeous. What am I? There you go. Gorgeous polish. Um, but I'm going to show you a comparison to this later because um, you'll see that there's something in the new Russian collection that's quite similar. This is Sunspear, which is positively gorgeous. Also, I love this kind of like blonde beige color as a neutral, and it just has these beautiful iridescent flakies. And then this is Nymeria, which as you guys know, I'm obsessed with grays. This has gold flakes. This gray tends to lean a little bit olive, um, at least in my naked eye, that's how it looks like. And so yeah, that's the Game of Thrones collection. So I don't know that I'm going to swatch these because if I'm going to start swatching, this is going to be forever long. So this is Sun Spear from the Game of Thrones collection. And I just wanted to show you a comparison of other polish polishes that I have. So this is British Blondes, which was a polish pickup polish. And as you can see, they pretty much have a very similar base color. If I may say so, Sunspear has a little bit more of a peachy pink tint to it, but this is a very similar base color. Um, obviously, British Blondes is packed with like a bigger size flaky, and like I think they also have some gold uh, flakes in there, which I think Sunspear only has iridescent flakies, but so that's that. I mean, honestly, you could do without one. Um, if you didn't get British Blondes and you had Sunspear, I, you know, wouldn't cry a river over it. And then this is Alien Bloom, which is also a very, I mean, literally, they could probably be the same polish. It just has a little bit more white to it. And obviously, this is gold flakes and these are iridescent flakies. So these three are honestly very similar, which makes me think, I'm like, oh my gosh, Sheila, here you go again with, you know, having 10 polishes of the same shade. Um, but yeah, very happy to have all of these in my collection. And it's just, it's, you know, again, they're backups of each other, if I might say, but they're very similar. So if you have one of any of these, you probably are okay. Now this is Polishes Dracaris. I think I'm saying that right, Dracaris. And uh, I wanted to show you one of the polishes that I got from the Russian collection, and this is Doll Kingdom. 
And when I looked at both of these, I really thought that I could do away with one of them. And my husband was like, well, they're your polishes now. You can do whatever you want with it. But I'm thinking maybe not. I'm not really sure what I want to do. But as you can see, they are very, very similar. If I may say, Doll Kingdom is a little bit more fuchsia, magenta, and Dracarys is a little bit more really cherry red. And I think that Dracarys is much more beautiful in a sense that it is more glowy. Although there is a strong linear hollow on Doll Kingdom. So, I mean, technically they're different enough, but I think it's the same mood. So if you have Dracarys, which I know a lot of people have because this is such a beautiful brush. It was one of the favorites from the Game of Thrones collection or that Fire and Ice collection. Um, you probably did not or will not pick up Doll Kingdom. And also, by the way, I'm doing this because Polish is having a restock this Sunday. So I would have posted this um, video by Saturday night and the next day, Sunday night, they're going to have um, a restock of this. So um, I wanted to show you that. If you have Dracarys, you probably do not need Doll Kingdom. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna swatch it just because of the restock I wanted to show you guys. So the first thing I'm gonna swatch is Dracarys. And you'll see, whoa, I probably should have taken some of that out. So that's Dracarys right there. Absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous polish. Look at that beauty. Okay, so I'm gonna put that down. And then I'm going to swatch Doll Kingdom. And hopefully you'll discern a difference. So you can, you know, make your decision. If you had missed, oops, sorry. I should have probably swatched that like. So as you can see, this is a little bit more sheer. There you go. It's a little bit more sheer and it's a little bit more pink, like fuchsia pink, then Dracarys. So there you go. That's the difference. So I guess it's different enough. I'm so glad I swatched it now. So the, this one right here is Dracarys. It's a, definitely a little bit more red, cherry red, if I may say. And Doll Kingdom oh. is pink. A little bit more fuchsia so I guess I am definitely keeping this both now they're different enough on the swatch stick that I'm gonna keep it both so now we're gonna go to all the polish polishes that I got from the Russian ballet collection which I am so excited about to be perfectly honest this one right here this is clockwork castle I saw this on your girl V and I was like no listen I need to make an order that will reach $75 just for me to get this I really hope you guys have this or I know I've seen this around on these stashes which I don't know why because it's such a positively beautiful polish not necessarily the most unique in the indie world like I know ethereal has something like this Illyrian has something like this polish for days is something like this but this is just to me so gorgeous and I really don't think I have like something that is this beautiful in my collection the closest I probably have of this is that dreamland one that I had that I did not really love I just love the tone the dark tone of this polish so this is clockwork castle since we're already starting with this anyway and then the second exclusive one is Odette and this is when I think you order $50 this is an absolutely gorgeous sort of like muted light blue, kind of like a porcelain blue, could also be mint. I mean, it's just, I know in the camera it leans blue, but there is a lot of like kind of minty green into this polish and it's just so gorgeous. And of course that gold flaky is one of my favorites from polish, so that's gorgeous. And then I have, 
of course, <laughs> clock maker, which like my husband was teasing me. He's like, I can't find this clock maker. I'm like, it's two words or one word. I don't know. Break it up. I need that polish. <laughs> it's funny. But yeah, it's this absolutely beautiful yellow, kind of like a muted, it's not really mustard, but it's very muted um, with gold flakies. And you know I'm going to compare this with Miel, which I have also, but we'll move on. I have Tiny Ginger Snaps, which is an absolutely gorgeous sort of brick red terracotta color with the gold flakies. Um, there was a lot of hype over this, so I'm not going to dwell on that. And then this is St. Petersburg, which is just this absolutely gorgeous sort of, I don't know, is, is it really a Merlot color? It's like kind of like a burgundy maroon sort of. It's just gorgeous, packed, packed, packed with glitter goodness. And then I think this is my favorite of the bunch apart from the uh, exclusive. This is Celesta and Holy Macaroni. Kind of reminds me of an Emily Damali, but probably more beautiful. The base color is just so gorgeous. It's like a very light eggplant jelly. Holy macaron, just beautiful. And then I have Imperial Theater, which is a much more like richer, but still muted blue. And I'm gonna compare it with Odette in the bottle actually. So as you can see, this is Odette and this is Imperial Theater. And there is definitely a huge difference on that base color. The same gold flakies are in there. Just absolutely beautiful polishes, you guys. I love, love, love polish. And then I think last but not the least, I have Casnoiset. Cas I think I'm saying that right, but. That's the name right there. And this is the um, white Crowley with lots of like multicolored um, flakies in there. I know there's a lot of makers who released something like this um, for Christmas. I know uh, Glisten and Glow has one. I think Noodles has one. There's a lot, a lot of makers who made something like this, but I honestly think this is the classiest of the bunch. This um, doesn't scream Christmas per se. Like it's not that like, you know, and believe me, I love, you know, tacky Christmas stuff, but this is not tacky at all. It's just so beautiful, beautiful white Crowley. You can really wear all year round, but it also does have a little bit of holiday in it. So that is what I got from the Russian collection. I'm going to move on to the comparisons. So bottle shot. These are Miel and Clockmaker. As you can see, Miel right here is a little bit more of a richer yellow. It's definitely more golden, has that honey quality to it. And Clockmaker is a little bit muted. And it's a little bit of a softer yellow. So we're going to swatch those just so you can see for the um, reset. So I'm going to be doing Miel on the left. So this is Miel. Oh my goodness, this is real. I'm just in love with this color. I don't know why. Oh, wait, maybe I should take out that thing underneath so it'll focus on it as I swatch it. But gorgeous formula, there's enough of that like gold dust in there to make it so absolutely beautiful. All right, so that's Miel. And then I'm gonna do Clockmaker. So this is Clockmaker. I'm thinking if this runs long, I'm actually going to put some timestamps on my, um, on my, a description box so you can just skip to the comparisons and you can just you know watch it watch the whole video later or not whatever you guys want and that right there is one coat of clockmaker and there's the two of them compared so very different 
um, even on base color, this one's so much richer. Just very different polishes, you guys. And I'm just so happy to have these two in my collection. I also wanted to do a bottle shot comparison of Casse, Casse Noisette to look at Old Baltimore because they are the same white Crelly base. The only difference, I think, is that... Um, Look how old Baltimore has that kind of holographic shimmer that goes through there. As you can see that flash right there. And Casse Noisette doesn't have that. Um, also, there is a very strong predominant green flaky on Casse Noisette. There are some green flakies on Look how old Baltimore, but it's not that predominant. Like, it's really more of that gold copper um, flakies that are in there that's like really you know showing up whereas I think Cassie Noisette has like a bit more of like a balanced amount of the different colored um, flakies in it so yeah do you need both white crellies do I need both white crellies in my collection I think I'm gonna definitely be keeping all of these just because they were gifted to me my my very dear husband but if you were someone who had look at old Baltimore and you per didn't like it or I don't know whatever you liked it um and you're you know trying to make a decision on Cassie Noisette you probably definitely could do without it um they are similar enough that if you are not nitpicky about the differences you could just keep one or the other so then the last three that my husband got from Polish just to kind of meet that $75 line, you know, for the exclusive Polish, was these three polishes. This is Rusalka Rusalka, which is the one uh, gold flaky that I didn't have from that, like, release. I know I have Grindelwald, I have um, Nagini. So it was this one that was constantly sold out, and I finally got it. And it's such a beautiful, sort of very dusted gray with a blue undertone. Like a charcoal gray, slate gray, something like that. That's gorgeous. And then this is Dog Days which I hope it would focus because it's just such a gorgeous flaky bomb green polish. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's just so beautiful right there. And then Sky Glass, which is a much more richer sort of purple. Um, like say for example, if I compared it to uh, Celesta, very different. I think it may be the same flakies in there though just that base color is very different so yeah so that's it you guys those are everything I got that were polish and polish related for Christmas from my dear and loving husband I want to end with the swatch sticks right in front of you because I just wanted to kind of repoint that out um, Basically, this is Quixotic's Mustard Seed, and this is Sally Hansen's Butterscotch. When they dry down, apart from maybe the fact that um, Butterscotch dried down a little bit darker, they are literally essentially the same polish. So I'm very happy that at least I have those two as a backup of each other. This one is Doll Kingdom right here, which Polish is going to be restocking um, Sunday night, December 29th, I believe. I'm going to kind of um, write the details, the restock details, either on the screen or in the description box. Um, this is definitely a more pink uh, polish than I thought it was going to be. This is Dracaris right here to compare, and they are very different polishes. And then, of course, this is Doll Kingdom, and this is Miel. So I know a lot of people got Miel when it came out. And uh, very different polishes. I really think that if you are a diehard yellow lover like myself, um, these two definitely have a place in your collection, and they're just gorgeous. So that's it, and thank you so much for being here with me to chat about anything and everything nail polish. Um, 
If you haven't already, please subscribe and hit that bell button for notifications. Again, I am so, so, so behind. So I think I haven't done my monthly polishes for the month of November. So I think I'm just gonna combine November and December and I'm gonna release that early January just so like, you know, that can be out and then I know PPU is coming up. So there's a lot of content, just very little time to film them. So I'm gonna to try to do um, a lot of catching up and I hope that I will be seeing you in my next video. I hope everybody has a healthy and happy and safe New Year's Day and I will see you again soon. Bye.